Hello and welcome to this quick video all about how the power systems and the voltages work inside something like a fixed wing model. Now I've had a number of requests recently where people have been coming into this part of the hobby either from the multi-rotor part of the hobby or maybe who are brand new to radio control and aren't sure about how all this works. Now I'm going to put some links down below so if you're new to all this and this is the kind of thing you're trying to figure out these additional videos will actually help you out. Now, the thing to remember with any kind of radio control system is there's basically two voltages that are needed inside a model. The first one is provided by the battery that you plug in. That's typically a LiPo or a lithium ion battery, and that's going to be 12, 16 or more volts typically. A little two cell battery will be about seven point something volts. That is there to power the motor that's typically going to be doing wheels or a prop or something else. The other thing that's needed inside the model is typically going to be a 5 volt supply. Now that 5 volts is used to power everything else. So things like the radio receivers and the servos and everything else that's in the model. Because typically those things won't work off the battery voltage. There are occasionally electronics that you can get that will run at the battery voltages, but they are kind of more exotic and tend to be a lot more expensive. By default, most things that you get in the hobby will kind of be very happy with five volts. So that's the kind of default that tends to be there. So let me talk about the parts of the system that you're going to find if you are building your first radio controlled wing or plane and how it all works. And let's talk about the differences between if you do or don't put something like a flight controller inside. So let's look at a very basic system that you would find in a traditional airplane without a flight controller. On the left hand side we have our LiPo battery, typically LiPo but these days it could be lithium ion, it could be anything really, but typically a 3S battery is about 12.5 volts, a 4S battery is about 16 and something odd volts. That is normally connected via some form of connector. Uh, XT60, XT30, XT90 is typical in the hobby these days. The number in the name gives you an idea of what the maximum current is that's going to be supplied. That is then plugged into something called an electronic speed controller or shortened to ESC. See my videos about what the ESC does in far more detail. I'll put a link down below. That is then connected to a brushless motor via three wires. Now, if it isn't a brushless motor, it's normally connected via only two wires. And this is still a speed controller, but it's a brushed speed controller rather than an ESC. When you talk about an ESC, you're really talking about a brushless motor and they're connected by these three cables. Now inside the motor, there are multiple sets of windings and the ESC kind of chops up this DC battery voltage into pulses that go along these three wires and force the rotor to turn on the motor. And that is how everything works. The amount of power that the ESC sends to the motor kind of dictates the speed that it turns and that is actually set by the signal coming into the ESC from the throttle channel and that can be from anything from your receiver or from even from something like a flight controller. So that's how it works just with the battery voltage and this is the only part of the system in a model that's typically running at the full battery voltage. Everything else is typically running at a lower power. So let's go and have a look at how this works if we also need the 5 volts in the model. And we always need that lower voltage because, again, this is the only part of the system, battery, ESC and motor, that is running at the full battery voltage. All the other electronics that are in your model, things like your receiver, things like if you've got lights, other stuff, is probably going to need less than that 16 odd volts that you're going to get out of a 4S LiPo battery. Now, what you have is if you look on a regular ESC, you'll notice that out the side of it, there is a cable that's usually terminated into some form of kind of servo style connector. And that has three cables. There is a ground wire, there is a signal wire on the other side, and the middle is typically a red or a dark brown wire. That is actually five volts. Because what the ESC does, as well as the job that we've just talked about in the previous slide, it's also creating a five volt supply that comes down this line. So by plugging this cable into something like the throttle connection on your receiver, it's actually going to power the receiver via the five volts that's part of this cable, which makes it incredibly easy. 
The other really cool thing is, is all the pins on something like a receiver for the ground and the five volt parts are connected together. So that then means that there's five volts and ground available. So as you plug in the servos into the other ports, they are also powered by that same five volts too. And it makes it incredibly easy to put everything together. However, it gets a little bit more complicated when we stick a flight controller inside the model. And lots of flight controllers these days, either on the board themselves, if it's something like an all-in-one, or as part of a stack where you have a power distribution board or something underneath, the way it works now is the battery now connects to the flight controller and the flight controller then connects the ESC. So this flight controller is kind of sitting in between the power connector and the ESC that we've looked in previous slides. So this flight controller on board has a lot of additional electronics that's all there to manage the voltages. So the battery voltage, that 12 or 16 volts, is reduced by the flight controller on board itself down to the 5 volts and also 3.3 volts that it needs for its own onboard electronics. So now we don't need that spare 5 volts from the ESC. So you'll find that ESCs that are designed to work with a flight controller typically won't have that extra bit of electronics on board, a battery eliminator circuit or BEC, that will provide the 5 volts because the 5 volts is already being created by the flight controller and that's used to power things like your receiver and GPS and everything else. And you'll probably find that ESCs that you buy that are designed to work with a flight controller won't have the three wires like we can see here it will actually just have the two outer wires connected. And that's a big sign that the ESC doesn't have a battery eliminator circuit on board, and it's also really designed to work with a flight controller. The last example we'll talk about as part of this is, well, what about if you're using a flight controller that isn't really designed to work with servos? And I've done a couple of videos on this, and I'll put a link down below where I kind of explain how you can do this. Now, this isn't something that I would recommend that somebody that's new into the hobby would do, but if you have a flight controller that's maybe designed for use in something like a multi-rotor or a drone, where it's only expecting to talk to ESCs and it's handling all of its own bits and pieces, then it won't be producing a 5 volt supply with enough current or power to run servos because it's not expecting to be connected to them. However, there are flight controllers these days that are designed for use in wings and planes that do that automatically. Again, I'll put a couple of links down below to a couple of video series where I've used those kind of boards. If, however, you're using a flight controller that is designed for a drone where it doesn't really expect to be plugged into servos, you can make it work with servos. But what you have to do is you have to use that 5 volt supply from the ESC and plumb it into all of the servo connections so that that works. Again, I'll refer you to the video that's linked down below that goes into a little bit more detail. But typically the way it works here is the flight controller is creating its own 5 volt supply to use to run its own electronics and its own CPU and the other things on here. Uh, but this 5 volt supply from the ESC that was designed to run servos is the one we kind of pinch so that the servos can still be run and that 5 volt supply is separate and protected from the flight controller. So there you have it, those are the basic pieces of the system for power inside a model. Again, you're going to have your main battery voltage going to ESC, going to a motor that's going to provide the movements through wheels or props or whatever it is that you have on the model. And you also have a separate voltage, typically five volts, that's going to power things like servos. Things like a flight controller are going to be connected to the battery these days and kind of do all of their own power management. But if you're doing something a bit wacky or using very big, heavy servos, inside a model I'd recommend using them and powering them with a separate 5 volt supply. So hopefully that's been interesting and useful for you. If you have any comments or questions please pop them down below. Thank you for watching the video. If you watch my videos and find them useful then please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps the channel a lot. 
If you really like what I'm doing here, you can become a Patreon and support the time I spend helping others and get access to lots of exclusive benefits. Link is in the video description. Remember that all the videos on the channel are organized into playlists, so you can easily use those playlists to find all the videos on a subject that you are interested in. Add Painless360 to your searches on Google and YouTube, and it'll help you find my content for any particular topic. Thanks again for watching, and as always, happy flying.